How's it going guys? We have a past level question for internal medicine, family medicine, surgery for 2CK. If you're studying for step one, obviously you're going to need to get a high score on the exam. It's going to be the bulk of your competitiveness. Not going to make this a lengthy clip. Tell you exactly what you need to know, not waste our time. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical and mhlman underscore medical links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. 71-year-old man comes to the physician two days after experiencing a 10-minute painless loss of vision in his left eye. Blood pressure 150 over 95. Cried duplex ultrasonography. Shows 50% occlusion bilaterally. Current medications are lisinopril and aspirin. Question wants to know the most appropriate pharmacologic therapy for this patient. So on USMLA, this is amaurosis fugax, painless loss of vision in eye. If we have retinal artery occlusion, TIA, or stroke, the first thing we're going to do is say, is blood pressure normal or high? If blood pressure is high, we assume atherosclerosis causing carotid stenosis, where an atheromata, a plaque, has launched off to the brain slash eye. We have systolic impulse pounding the carotids, endothelial damage. That's a mechanism for the atherosclerosis. If and we're going to do a carotid duplex ultrasonography as our next best step. I'll explain the management in a, in a moment. If our blood pressure is normal, we say likely atrial fibrillation, where left atrial mural thrombus has launched off to the brain slash eye. Next best step is regular ECG. If they tell you in the last line, ECG shows sinus rhythm, no abnormalities. Next best step is 24-hour ambulatory ECG monitor, aka Holter monitor, looking for paroxysmal AFib. Now, in this case, clearly our blood pressure is elevated. We've already gone on to do the carotid duplex ultrasound. Now, if we have our end arterectomy threshold is going to be greater than 70% symptomatic, 80% occlusion asymptomatic. Now, carotid brewery is not symptomatic. That's a sign. Symptomatic means TIA, stroke, or retinal artery occlusion. Okay, that's what symptomatic means. Now, USMLE they're not going to dance around the borderline thresholds, okay? They'll give you 30%, 50%, 90%. It's been my observation, okay? It's not my opinion. It's observation on NBME exams. So here we're clearly under the threshold, all right? Now, I'm just going to, as I said, we're not wasting time here. I'm just going to come right out of the gates. If you are under the end arterectomy thresholds, as I just said, we implement a triad of medications. Number one is going to be antiplatelet. Aspirin is sufficient on NBME slash USMLE as per my observation. Now, I've written in my PDFs in real life. You can give aspirin alone. You can give the combo of aspirin and diperidamol. You can give clopidogrel alone. USMLE doesn't give a fuck. They tend to just have aspirin. The patient will be on aspirin, and they can maintain that regimen. Okay? That's number one, antiplatelet, aspirin sufficient. Number two, ACE inhibitor or an ARB. We have to address blood pressure. Okay? Now, lisinopril tends to be the USMLE favorite. Just my observation, all right? And this is what they'll do. They'll ask you for the third medication. Students kind of freeze. They're not sure. Well, the third is a statin. Answer is just simply simvastatin. doesn't matter which one. It's just you're going to choose the statin, all right? That's if we're below the threshold here. If we're over the threshold, we're going to do endarterectomy. Now, USMLE can say, for instance, patients on aspirin and a torvastatin, and they'll say, what's the next best step in this situation? The answer would be lisinopril. Or they'll say the patient's on simvastatin and lisinopril. What's the next best step? The answer is aspirin. Okay, so it's not complicated. You need to know the triad under the endarterectomy thresholds. Now, real quick, as I said, I'll tell you some high yield points, you know, external to this question itself, which is clopidogrel. You should just know this binds to uh, antagonizes ADP 2Y12 receptor on platelets. This can be used as the second line agent in MI after aspirin. So patients having an MI, you give antiplatelet, aspirin first, paramedics arrive, they're going to give dual antiplatelet therapy, clopidogrel. This can also be used for stenting, although I haven't seen it on NBME that way. That's more just resource talk. And as I just fucking said, it can sometimes be used in carotid stenosis if you're under the endarterectomy threshold, we just do medical management, but aspirin is sufficient. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, phenylfibrate. You need to know fibrates they are the best agent for lowering triglycerides, most efficacious. They tend to come in after, above a, a triglyceride of 300. Okay, now they upregulate lipoprotein lipase. They also uh, bind to PPAR alpha or upregulate PPAR alpha. Now, these can cause myositis, they can cause hepatotoxicity, they can cause cholesterol stones. Wrong fucking answer. 
choice C heparin wrong answer, so this is going to upregulate antithrombin 3, and antithrombin 3 is going to reverse factors 10A and 2A. 2A is just thrombin. Uh, heparin for US simile, given for DVTs, PE clearly, as well as superficial thrombophlebitis, just as subcutaneous anoxaparin. And I'd say one of the highest yield points about heparin is that it can cause HIT, heparin induced thrombocytopenia. So they just give heparin for DVT, platelets go low, and they just want you to know that's uh, antibodies, okay, against heparin, platelet factor 4 complex. It's type 2 hypersensitivity. You're going to treat with a direct thrombin inhibitor, such as dabigatran. Wrong fucking answer. TPA, wrong answer. This is just as a clot buster for ischemic strokes under three to 4.5 hours. Okay, so if a patient is over the 4.5 hour threshold and has had ischemic stroke, aspirin is what the US simile wants. Okay, TPA. Very rarely, it can be used in the setting of pulmonary embolism. I've seen it once on 2CK material. This is if we have obstructive shock in the setting of PE, okay? So if a patient has low blood pressure, is hemodynamically unstable in a PE, uh, they've given TPA. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Finally, warfarin wrong answer. I mean, myriad of uses. If a patient's had a DVT, we obviously give heparin initially. The patient will go home on warfarin. They want that as an answer. Not difficult. Warfarin is also given to patients who have atrial fibrillation, who have a CHADS VASC score elevation. Okay, it's a long discussion, but those are the and, and obviously prosthetic valves as well. High yield indication for warfarin. Obviously, this is going to inhibit vitamin K epoxide reductase, and it's teratogenic. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.